Hello, I'm Jung Young Eun. So this is Christmas Eve. To send you to your loved ones in the evening, we are having the discussion at the lunchtime. Our Santa Claus masters will give you big present by solving your difficult problems. Merry Christmas! Merry Christmas! So you're wearing Santa Claus um, hats. It looks like uh, you're going to give me presents. So instead of giving you presents, we are going to solve your problems. So this is a wonderful Christmas vibe we have, and we don't skip case discussion at this time. What are we going to discuss today? Let me read a letter from one of the viewers. In the upper interior, the bone is seriously resorbed up to the basal bone. Immediate placement is difficult and the staged approach may have aesthetic problems. So, how should I establish the treatment plan? Clinical pictures, number 21 and 22. The gingiva has swelling. Bone is quite seriously resorbed and teeth are moved buckly. On the CT image, the bone is destroyed, so buckle plate is almost gone. Choosing either immediate placement or delayed approach seems to be very challenging. So, what do you think? First of all, it's very troublesome and the immediate placement is not possible and we need to go for the staged approach. The dead space of bone is large. It's hard to predict how much bone regeneration can be achieved and how much remodeling can be done. So this is completely non-contained defect. Very challenging case. Very hard. Looking at that case, I sigh first. I believe the questioner dentist is lost as to what to do. I wonder if placing an implant is the right option. The case is very challenging and the outcome will not be satisfactory. Therefore, we need to be very careful in choosing what treatment we are going to select. Dr. Kim Kyung-ho, what do you think? If a patient like that comes to me, I would be very much worried. Even though we use a staged approach, gingiva and bone situation is really bad. Therefore, a treatment after extraction would not be very good. To help the questioner dentist to have a happy new year, uh, we all need to work really hard. I look forward to various advices for the treatment plan. And you will explain with the similar cases, right? Yes, I prepared one. This is similar to the case under discussion. How can we treat? We have the immediate placement criteria, but there is no buckle plate and uh, gingiva, so we need to go for the delayed approach. Immediate is not a good option. Even though we use a delayed approach, how much soft tissue and bone can be built? That's questionable, so, so let me show you a prepared case, and uh, I was really struggling, and uh, you will be able to have an idea what to discuss with a patient looking at this case. The patient came like this, and the treatment was received before. Number two was already extracted, and number 23, the gingiva was very poor. How to treat this? At that time, soft tissue was pulled. So I used the forced eruption. If you look at here, number three, location an apical bone of it. The forced eruption is not very effective, but at that time, it was the last straw, so I used 
forced eruption. So it got much better, but still, the soft tissue, not a lot of them came down. The flap is opened. Buckle plate is gone. So uh, standard GBR is done. In this case discussions, I showed you a lot of cases, but we don't always succeed in all the cases. The patient was a smoker. Palatal plate was rotated and the CT graft was done, but in the middle, the CT got necrosis. Even though it's healed, you can see the collapse on the palatal side. Actually, it's not really good. Heart tissue was maintained to a certain degree, so we decided to do surgery by raising a flap. Just unlike the case under discussion, the case under discussion was a little bit positive because at number 11 and 23, the proximal bone level was quite high, but here, the distal of 21, there's a recession. And also at number 24, if you look at the situation here, the bone loss at adjacent teeth were quite serious. So there was a limitation to what we could do. So implants were placed. Following the rule of 3 millimeter gap between them, the implants are not in a straight line. The buccal contour and height of bone was maintained and uh, they are placed again. Fortunately, no exposure was made, so I gave instructions to the patient to follow. The soft tissue got thickened at a glance. Number 21 and 24, gingival recession, root surface was exposed. And it looks they're all covered, but we cannot go against the biology. So it's healed like this. The tissue height and width has increased pretty good, but the existing limitations could not be overcome. In the previous slide, the graft of soft tissue was done very well and uh, expected it to be maintained. However, when it's healed, the existing limitations could not be overcome. So in this case, prosthesis is provided fitting the situation. There is an opening for embracers. And the prosthesis, I made a lot of efforts to accommodate the situation. But compared to the beginning, we couldn't overcome the limitations, the existing problems. Because of periodontal disease, Heart tissue and soft tissue were quite damaged, so that was the limitation they couldn't overcome. In the end, this is 2004 at the time of surgery, and in 2010, follow-up picture, number 21 and 24, soft tissue had limitations which could not be overcome. But on the other side, number 13, if you look at the soft tissue height, to a certain degree, it is harmonious. When I saw the case under discussion, if we work more and more on it, it will become more challenging. I'm sharing this case with you because the limitations could not be overcome, but I did as much as I could to address the situation here. So this is not a simple matter. Thank you very much for sharing the case. Dr. Kim kyung won do you have a case? Looking at the case, it was really troublesome, and I have looked and found one similar case. A young man, three months ago, number 24 and 25 were extracted. There was a benign tumor. The result of biopsy was myxoma. So that's removed and uh, the tooth was extracted. This is similar to the case under discussion if only extraction is made and no treatment is provided. Benign tumor was removed, so it's not very good. As Dr. Yang said, 
Fortunately, canine at number 6, a little bit of bone remains, so that is a positive thing. Come to think of it now, this is very old case. Tissue expander can be used to expand the tissue, the soft tissue. That could have been better. The, this is a young patient, and uh, the patient was very afraid of autobone graft. And we needed a lot of them, so uh, I used allogenic block bone. The block bone is fixed, and it is covered with allogenic bone and it's fixed with fibrin glue and uh, collagen membrane covers that. Implants were placed five months later. You cannot see it clearly here, but the bone graft uh, could not be maintained properly because it was allogenic bone. At the time we had issue of mad cow diseases, so uh, another graft was done using meta TCP, but it is uh, resorbed on the x-ray. On the top left, allogenic block bone was fixed with a screw and uh, during five month follow-up two implants were placed on the panorama no problem and the tissue was okay but after prosthesis i don't have the picture sorry about that so the patient was not followed properly two years later the patient came back. The allograft block bone was resorbed a little bit and uh, threads were exposed. As Dr. Yang said, still, there were bone canine and at number six, so it was um, a fortunate thing. If I used autogenous bone, it could have been better. At that time, I didn't know, so I used the human bone and beta TCP. If I do it again today, I would use bovine bone at the top, xenogenic bone, and then it would be helpful to maintain the space or volume. Another case, this is a posterior case. In 2005, a very old case. The patient was very busy because of business, so he didn't come to the clinic often. He's a heavy smoker, and oral hygiene is very poor. Actually, intraorally, the actual situation is really bad. Number 7 is missing, so number 37, implant is placed. Number 47 uh, is too close to alveolar nerve. Number 8. We took the block bone from there. It is inserted into the extraction socket. The patient was hard to follow up. After six months, one implant was placed. After two years, number 47, the root was very poor. We decided to extract, but he was lost for follow-up, and five years later, he turned up. Below number six, bone is gone, so we had to extract. It was in May, and after that, it was July 2011, so he was very busy visiting frequently the Kaesong Industrial Park. So I told him I'll do bone graft again here. And he said it was too painful for him when I took the autogenous bone from Ramus before. So there is implanted number 7 and there is number 5. So allogenic block bone is used here. If you look at the CT, on the lingual side, there is a bone left. Fortunately, I gave him warning several times to him. If I extracted it earlier, it could have been better. So allogenic bone graft is done, and two layers of a collagen membrane is used here. At number 6, num, uh, the implant was placed. If you look at the last picture, number 47, it was autogenous bone graft done about two, 12 years ago. At number 6, allogenic block bone graft was done five years and ten months ago, so the site where allogenic 
graft was done, the crystal part is resolved. So in this case, just like the case under discussion, if we extract the tooth and leave it like that, it will become a very impossible case. This is not exactly the case under discussion, but when we do the graft, we need to carefully choose the graft material depending on the case. Thank you. Thank you very much for sharing your case. Dr. Son Young Hui, you have prepared a case. I have prepared two cases of maxillary in anterior cases. The first case has very big defect. The primary stability is an issue, so the problem can be addressed. The second case, as Dr. Yang said, we don't always succeed in all cases. So when inappropriate approach is used, what will happen? That will be described in the second case. In 2011, patient wants an implant at number 36, and there's a root fracture. I told the patient to extract it, but that was rejected by the patient. The patient said, it's not painful, so I don't want to extract it. That happens often. After that, in January 2011, there was a gum boil. The bone is all resorbed, so it is extracted, and I enter there to place an implant. Root fragments have been collected. It was in many pieces. The defect was like this. Granulation tissue is not removed yet. After the removal, it looks like this. As you can see with the probe, it's more than 15 millimeters in depth. In this case, the implant fixture length in stock are usually 13 millimeters. So 13 millimeters is not quite right for this but the patient insisted on completing the treatment on the day because the patient lives far away from my clinic. He was from Gyeongsangbuk-do province, and it is placed quite deep. 15 millimeter drill can hardly reach the button. Initial stability was 8 newton centimeter. The position is important, and uh, for GBR, FDBA cortical chips are used, and an implant is placed and submerged. Even though you don't place an implant after extraction to prevent soft tissue contraction, this technique can be useful. X-ray after implant placement. It is seated very deep, but the engagement with the bone is this much. The next day of surgery. So the patient stayed one night waiting for the dressing. So four weeks post-op, it's healed. PTFE open membrane technique is used. Sometimes it is healed this cleanly, but sometimes it's not. It is removed. Epithelialization is finished. Then I can just wait. Post of four months, it is re-entered, bone regenerated, and soft tissue volume that was good enough as I wanted. Think of it now, I was lucky too. So we cannot use this technique in all cases. Provisionalization, it was used. And this is the last x-ray picture. The f patient is lost to follow up because the lab technician quit the job. She is his mother. So this is a way to address the problem in uh, limited cases. The first condition 
It should be before soft tissue contracture, and even though it's weak, fixtures stability should be able to be obtained. The case under discussion may not be good candidate for this technique, but if it is not as serious as that, this technique can be applied. So, this is one of the minimal invasive treatment options. The second case, it is not finished case, but it is very similar except it is for one tooth, number 21. Others are similar. As you can see, external root resorption is serious in 21, leading to the defect, and we can expect no buckle bone. After extraction, I found the root had been already fractured. On the standard x-ray, the fracture a root fracture remains, so that is removed. I made a first mistake. I waited. I should have done something to prevent the soft tissue collapse. So that was the first mistake. Second, soft tissue is being healed. Number 11, root corner treatment is done. If you look at the CT, the lingual plate and labial plates are gone. It could have been better if we had at least one. Out of nowhere, I got the confidence to place the implant here to do sandwich augmentation. FDBA cortical bone is used. You will be able to see the bone when saline is sprayed, it is jellified, so it was not good enough, so this was a mistake. It pops out under pressure, so I should not have used it, therefore it failed, and it is switched to another bone, to xenogenic bone, and uh, it is covered with a collagen membrane, primary closure was achieved. If I waited after this, it could have been okay, like I could get 60 marks out of 100, but I had a different idea. This is the CT, the augmentation is done properly, but I didn't like the lingual, palatal part. I really wanted to do something about it, so I opened it again. I don't have pictures because I was very nervous. I take pictures, so when I'm very nervous, I cannot take pictures. OB2 is a smart builder from Austin. Uh, the smart builder has uh, one side long, the other side is short. So it is done again. Palatal bone is made. However, the soft tissue is not good. After about six weeks, it is exposed. So I make mistake one after another. So I decided to remove it and I enter there. The fixtures platform is showing, the polished surface is showing on the labial side. Then nothing will work, but I was still obsessed. Xenogenic bone containing collagen is used to cover the site. Second stage surgery is done. On the x-ray, it doesn't look bad, but x-ray doesn't tell everything. So I couldn't sleep because of this. I was worried and I called the patient back and I explained what's going on and I said I would do it again and healing abutment is removed. The polished surface of the platform is showing. If it is not epithelialized, the prognosis is very poor, so it's removed. That's a dead space, so xenogenic bone and collagen containing 
xenogenic bone is inserted and collagen membrane covers the site. So I started all over again from circuit preservation. I'm afraid of the patient, so I decided to do guided surgery. The patient came back a few days ago and uh, we did a scan and uh, surgery is planned for next week. A few days ago, the CT was taken. The bone is regenerated, so I'm going to do it again. I could have done it in one run, but I made a mistake again and again. I should have been aggressive in some point, but in this case or the case under discussion, the first um, prerequisite for the success is to preserve the soft tissue. So uh, I'm a little bit embarrassed to show this, but this is my failure case. I appreciate your failure case very much. I have a question. Sometimes a lot of pus comes out. Soft tissue preservation is a good idea, but it is not possible sometimes. So what is the criteria to do preservation or not? First, when the pus is coming out a lot, a lot of exudate, you cannot do the preservation. The graft materials would be resorbed. However, the initial treatment, even though you cannot place an implant, if you can control infection, the soft tissue preservation should be initiated. If you use antibiotics massively, I believe the infection will be under control in two weeks and you need to start the soft tissue preservation technique. That's what I think. Any other ideas? Dr. Yang is the expert. We need to keep the soft tissue. It is not easy to treat soft tissue and hard tissue at the same time. For the case under discussion, we cannot treat both of them together. So when it comes to preserving the soft tissue, I believe Dr. Yang would be the expert to address that. I'm the same, but most of us think there are enough soft tissue. So we can see mucosa or gingiva, so we try to cover it with it. But the resistive keratinized tissue volume is very important. In the case under discussion, there's hardly any hard tissue, and soft tissue is keratinized, but inflammatory tissue is surrounding the teeth. How can we treat that is an issue, as you said. How much of soft tissue will be preserved during extraction should be considered. If we can do soft tissue preservation or augmentation, it's good, but we need to prevent the collapse of soft tissue. So there are various collagen products available. So if we can prevent the collapse of soft tissue, it will be very helpful. In my case, even for the case under discussion, I would use them, the collagen materials. As you said before, if infection is active, you should not do it to reduce the mistakes that we made. Thank you very much. So let's go back to the case. Let's summarize it. Would you give us closing comments? The dentist who sent us the case under discussion has some experience, but how to finish this is an issue for the dentist. 
if it were my patient before extraction, I would do the infection, the inflammation control first before extraction. FGG can be done to increase the keratinized gingiva. After that, teeth can be extracted. The inflammation is reduced, so in there, the environment can be created in favor of some techniques like open membrane technique or the currently trendy socket preservation to address hard tissue and the soft tissue. But in whatever technique you may use, including FGG, you need to maintain the soft tissue after that, depending on the situation, heart tissue can be increased. And uh, increasing heart tissue and the soft tissue together is very hard. If we, if we do socket preservation here, I don't think we'll have a good outcome. Intertendal papilla is all gone between 21 and 22, so there is a limitation. So one procedure cannot address all the problems. We need to take one step at a time. Then we can have better clinical outcome. Thank you. If I may add to that, if it was my case, it would be very troublesome. We can sacrifice aesthetics if it is a posterior case. But uh, antibiotics needs to be used to, to control inflammation. Bone graft for socket preservation would not be very good. Collagen can be used for uh, the soft tissue. There is no bone, buckly or palatally. A block bone graft can be considered. It is very challenging to have aesthetic outcome, so we need should not increase the expectation on the part of a patient, and then we need to explain this is a very challenging case to the patient. I would use collagen plug to heal the soft tissue. I'll watch the situation to go to the next step. Ultimately, it is not easy to get a good outcome. This is a very difficult case, too difficult case for Christmas season. Thank you very much for the same case. I believe there are many different approaches. There's a no one correct answer. And I hope this has been helpful to the dentist who sent us the issue. This concludes today's case discussion. I would like to thank all those dentists who sent us uh, difficult cases and the uh, three masters and uh, the viewers. Thank you very much. We'll improve ourselves and come back to you with a better program next year. So closing this case discussion, Dr. Young, Dr. Son, Dr. Kim, would you give us final remarks? Uh, this is a very hard time because of COVID-19. Thank you very much for being with us. We are not perfect, but uh, we have been engaging in case discussion. I hope this has been helpful to you. Happy New Year. At the end of the year and New Year, it needs to be spent with the family, but the viewers are watching us now. And uh, because of COVID-19, it is a very difficult time for us. I hope you would close the year fruitfully and Happy New Year. Thank you. Up to now, if you watched just uh, even one episode, I thank you very much. Preparing the case discussion it has helped me a lot, and I will continue to learn next year as well. Happy New Year and uh, stay healthy. So I hope clinical difficulties would be reduced next year. I am Dr. Jung Young Un, MC of this program. Happy New Year. Thank you. Thank you.
수고하셨습니다. 수고하셨습니다. 새해 복 많이 받으십시오. 새해 복 많이 받으세요. 새해 복 많이 받으세요.